Coach is Rick Stewart with AllAccessCoaching.com. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button down below so we can let you know when new content's been uploaded. Okay, so let's just talk about our base um, base power read here. Again, um, we're looking at three base boxes that we generally classify um, as an offense. Um, we've been working with four. I think I think the three three stack double eagle stuff's kind of coming back in fashion. Um, so we've got answers for that as well. Um, you know, but uh, again, full on box. Again, it's it's nothing earth shattering. Uh, just with what we're doing um, in our read wise. I mean, everybody kind of does it. Um, so if we're going power read here to the right, we're going to be reading this defensive end, um, obviously tackle guard, combo that thing all the way to backside backer. Um, center's going to back block, tackle's going to step hinge, um, going to skip all our guard up to that mic. Um, you know, and then we can, again, you'll see in some of these clips, we can block this uh, a million different ways, um, you know, and that's, I think one thing that um, helps our offense as well is we're, we can block it multiple ways. And a lot of times that's going to help our um, help our play action game as we go along there. Um, again, four, two box, nothing's going to change. Um, you know, your angles are a little uh, not as good. Obviously your tackles got to um, chip and get up a little bit faster um, on that block than he will in a four, one. So you've got to account for that. Um, and then in a three, two, you know, we get this question a lot. What do you do uh, to a three, two box uh, when you're blocking power read? Um, you know, there's uh, the, I'll, I will say this isn't um, this isn't probably your best play. If you're facing an odd front, we do have answers. We do run it um, as we go along. I'll show you what we do do typically when we're getting when we're getting an odd there. Um, but uh, if we do have this called in in want to run it or if it's something you want to run um, again we're just gonna we're gonna block down um, block back block back check hinge uh, pull and we're gonna read the end now what we what we teach is we're basically teaching hey we're gonna read whoever's in the C gap um, so if that end stays out he's gonna be our C gap defender <coughs> we're gonna read him um, if that end goes inside uh, we're gonna assume that this backer you know as long as it's not a blitz um, you know, we're going to assume this backer is going to be your C gap defender. So now we're going to read him. Uh, so uh, that's kind of how we're going to read each of those. Oh, the other way, sorry, the other way we'll do it too, um, is we'll do the, we'll do the exact same stuff um, with our power read sweep game. Um, we, we like to read all of our sweeps, we, we've got a way where we can give um, give it as a true sweep and not read anything. But um, again, being an option, um, an option team, we'd rather if you can get numbers and read a guy, uh, again, one less guy that you're required to block or make miss somewhere along um, somewhere along the line. Uh, so that's that's what we're going to do there. But again, it's all, all the same blocking for up front. The only difference, um, you know, now we're going to put a guy in motion, come across, uh, hand off and go go from there. Power read here to the left. Again, this is kind of a tempo uh, that we'll utilize quite a bit. Our check with me um, tempo, you know, some people like to build in checks for their quarterback and hey, they give them two plays and let the quarterbacks check it. That's fine. Um, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, personally, we'd rather check it from the sideline. Uh, I think you know, as much as as much as you can take off of a quarterback thinking wise on game day, um, I'm all for it. Again, they've got enough stuff that they've got to be thinking and worrying about and avoiding. I think if you can um, just take off some of the checks and stuff for them, I think it helps. Um, you know, TJ has been in our system long enough where I, I think he's more than capable of doing it. But again, I just I feel like I feel better when I have control. Um, you know, the coaches, we have control of what we're doing in that game. So we'll get to the sideline check, see where our numbers are um, and get going. OK, we're we're no huddle, but obviously we're about as slow, a slow and no huddle as you can get. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll eat that clock, but we're going to go power read left here. Um, we're going to read this defensive end. Um, and again, you'll see on the perimeter what's really important here is we've got our numbers going to have a guy blocking here. Going to have a guy blocking here. We're going to be arcing um, to go get on him right there. So we've got our good numbers. We just got to make make a good read here. Um, so let's watch this thing through. 
that we come across. Yeah, we're just reading that in. Um, you know, and again, if you listen to the if you listen to the triple um, presentation at all, you know, again, I, I really try not to overcoach these quarterbacks. Um, you know, there's uh, again, he's just got to make a read. Again, a lot of it's going to depend on who who are you reading, how athletic this guy, where do you want the ball to go? Um, again, for us, for a lot of a lot of it, if we were running this, we wanted to get it at the perimeter. We wanted it to get it out of TJ's hands. Um, you know, we, we wanted our running backs with some, some more carries out on the edge. And so we were telling them, hey, give it unless they tackle. Again, if you've got a guy, a bigger quarterback that you want to keep it downhill, great. Um, you know, but to me, again, the, the biggest thing with that is don't, don't overcoach those guys. Um, you know, give them the freedom to, to read it and give them some guidelines, but let those guys operate. Let them be confident. Let them get going. Um, you know, here's a pretty easy one. Obviously, he squeezes. We hand off. Um, we're off and running out on the perimeter, okay? And then one thing we teach on this uh, that we really harp on these running backs, uh, run the 200, run the 200, run the 200. Uh, we want to catch this thing, and we want to get this all the way to the sideline. Um, you know, I think it's important um, that you run all the way to the sideline there. Uh, that's just the way we want it. If the quarterback keeps it, it's going to be up up the shoot. Uh, if we hand this thing off, we want to get it to the sideline again, a lot like triple. We want to make you defend um, as a defense from sideline to sideline. We want to attack every single inch of this field. Uh, and it's important that you hit the sideline because um, as our blockers here, you know, we're really working on um, getting on these guys outside shoulders. That's what we're teaching. Hey, get to the outside shoulder, get to the outside shoulder, get to the outside shoulder um, and let's go fly fly around so those things both have to uh, both have to be coached together um, and it takes a lot of trust again some of these running backs see green grass in here and they just want to hit it up in there but that's not that's not what we're aiming for again um, you know some guys want different stuff but we want to make you defend uh, everything I want this you know we want to get again you get all these outside shoulders the, the reason we believe in that is you know you get this safety fitting well if you get him in here and he takes that wrong angle um, now we're really out the gate, whether if you, if you cut in here, well, now he's got a really good angle um, to tackle you. So we just think it's going gonna, it's gonna to really eat this safety up. And you've got to make one guy miss somewhere. Um, let's make it as hard as possible for this guy to tackle you. Or if he does come here, then it's as big a gain as possible. Um, so just some kind of teaching points there on that stuff. Okay, handing it off, off and running, great perimeter blocking. Um, and again, right up right up that sideline, run the 200, run the 200. That's, that's our coaching point. Again, you know, line-wise, you'll see um, going to block down. We probably actually declared this a 4-1 just because this guy was out. We'll see see where this tackle goes. I can't remember where he ends up going. Um, again, if they said, hey, this is a 4-2, he'll go there. If they said it's a 4-1, then he'll go all the way back. Um, okay, so we said it was a 4-1, which is fine. I think that's uh, what it is for us. Okay, we need to get our guard through there. Um, <laughs> It's one of our guards. We work it a ton. He still would always go a little bit wide. Again, those guys just got to pull up and, and not get too wide. That's your biggest thing. That'll always be your battle. Um, no matter how many times your old line guy drills that, they're still going to drift on you. You just got to constantly harp it. Okay, and then good look at the edge. Um, again, he was tempted to, to dip up in there. Um, thankfully, he didn't because, again, he would have got tackled here, and now we're back, back out and running. Great perimeter blocking. Um, and again, in, in your power read stuff, I think that's something you really, really, really got to hammer, um, you know, is your perimeter blocking. You know, we're really hard on our guys on perimeter blocking, uh, but we show them a lot of love too. You know, when they do a great job, we celebrate it. You know, and sometimes I think coaches uh, harp on the negative so much you forget, um, you forget to praise your guys when they, when you've been on them, on them about blocking and they have a great block, you need to celebrate that just as much as when you were on them. I think that's important. Um, you know, I think if you can establish giving kids more praise for what they do well, um, you know, sometimes it's it's a good a good culture for them. 
Uh, but again, that's that's kind of that play there. Um, okay, here, just another look. Again, we're going to motion. Okay, this is another example um, of just how we wanted to block it, a little bit more of a game plan thing. Um, we knew we were playing a team uh, that was going to be man-to-man -man coverage, um, so we were going to run off, run off, um, come out here, first guy outside the block, we were going to block him, um, and we felt really good about our matchups with our running backs out on safeties. Um, just with we with what we had kind of seen on safeties, we thought we could uh, maybe get in space and make some of these guys miss and get get to the perimeter again. You just if you look at their D line, they're pretty tight in here. Um, you know, obviously trying to take away some of your triple and zone lanes. Um, so let's get this thing uh, outside um, and get it rolling again in squeezes. Yeah, we hand that thing off. You know, and it's hard for there. There's so much stuff. Um, for these DNs to worry about. And that's, uh, you know, that's one thing we really like about what we do here um, is we can give these guys multiple reads. Um, you know, sometimes we'll arc a guy and have a guy come kick him. Sometimes we'll arc a guy, have a come pass him. Sometimes this guy will get on him now. That end is kind of always got to have his head on a swivel. Uh, and then it's tough to have your head on a swivel and make a play. Uh, so we're going to hand that thing off. Um, and again, this is what we were looking for going, going into the game. Um, Okay, we got we got to run off. We got to run off. We got a really good block here by our cruiser. We thought with the way he fit, we thought if we ran the 200, and again, that's that's a big coaching point for us. You'll hear me keep saying that. Um, it it probably gets annoying to your kids, um, you know. But I think it's something that they can translate. Again, this was a track kid. Uh, Miko for us was was a kid that runs uh, ran track in high school. So I think sometimes they get that analogy. Uh, but here he is, off and running, gets to that edge. It's the sideline, you know, really good play there. Coaches Rick Stewart with AllAccessCoaching.com. I really hope this video helps make you a better coach. Make sure you hit the subscribe and like button down below so we can let you know when new content becomes available because we're all about coaches helping coaches. And remember, coach, Better today, never as good as tomorrow.